It's the NFL on EA Sports, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Texans and the Seahawks, and it's coming up next. We are just south of Pioneer Square here in the great northwest city of Seattle at newly named Lumen Field, home of the Twelves. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Houston Texans and the Seattle Seahawks. Taking it about the one. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So out come the Texans for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Now White with a first down throw. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Houston. A big play there. 71 yards. And the Texans have taken the early lead. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. Well, the offense wasn't out there for a long time, but they were out there for a good time. One play, and they're able to hit pay dirt. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here come the Seahawks in their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they'll be let out by the guy under center, Charles, their quarterback. And the tendency for most of these guys is to want to match things right away because they have a lot of confidence in their talent, too. They just saw a big strike against their team, and you know they're thinking to themselves, I can get this back right now on one play. Well, if it's there, you take it, but otherwise, just go ahead and calm your team down. Run the offense, get things going, and see how things settle in. On first and 10, here's Bree. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Zach Cunningham rolling in to get the sack. And just not much a quarterback can do there, CD. The pressure was in his face almost instantaneously, led to a very quick sack. Yeah, this time it's going to come from the middle linebacker because watching the linemen, it seemed to me that they thought he was going to drop back into pass protection, but he surprised them and came on the blitz instead and had a pretty clear run to the quarterback. On second down now, it's Warner. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Well executed there on second down, so do you go back to the air on third? Well, that's a possibility, but now you've opened up things to where you showed that you would run the ball in long distance situation. You might come back again because I doubt they believe you'll do it a second time. Now Breeze. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got a ball down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play 
won or lost a game. This seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up? And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. Another try after the first down sack. Breeze, that's complete to DK Metcalf. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Here's Breeze. He finds his man complete. That's Warner. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll let the QB keep it here off the option. A pickup of about three yards as he's taken down at the 31. Anytime you decide to use your quarterback as a runner, most of the time when you design a play, you're expected to break a little bit bigger than this one because when you run him on short gains, your risk reward and him taking hits, I'm not sure that's the payoff they were looking for. From the 31, Breeze able to find his target here, Largen. No gain that time on the completion and it'll be third down. Love the effort, love the dramatics, getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there, almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no gain, though? I was going to say, it's so pretty, <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> Now Breeze on third down. He's going to let this go for the end zone. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawks touchdown. DK Metcalf, 31 yards. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. I do believe we came here to see a game, didn't we? And it looks like he's running what we call routes versus air. He just go out there, draw a offensive unit, and throw the football with no defense. He's five for five on the opening drive. He was on his game there for drive number one, but my only thing is now he can't go any higher than that. He was so perfect. Can he do it again later? Yeah, all he cares about right now is making it 10 for 10, 15 for 15, <laughs> Keeping that going. and he feels like he can get it done. Point after, right down the middle. And we'll tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. Away. 
taking it about the one. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. So now we get set to see Houston for their second drive of the ball game. And following that long touchdown pass, a one-play drive last time, we'll see if the defense, you, you know they're ready. They don't want that to happen again. And you would have thought they would have been ready the yeah, last that's time. That's I mean, true. that's what you work on all the time. Make sure that no one gets behind you. That's the cardinal sin of defense, not giving up the long pass. They did. Let's see how they adjust. On first and ten, White throw right side into the hands of Aikens. And he's upended after a gain of four up to the 25-yard line. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Absolutely love the effort there. The ability to flow from his inside spot and stop that one at the line of scrimmage. Nice linebacker play. Now White. Going deep this time for Miller. And unable to connect. Incomplete. This is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. On fourth down, out is the punter, Cameron Johnston, to boot it away. Good open field tackling there. A 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And it'll be Seahawk football first and 10. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keep, keeping it away from danger. A really nice little right drive. And now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. <laughs> Whether it's the guys huh? up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the football. Uh, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. Chains now, second and two. Bree's gonna throw. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he gets this up across the 35. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is that right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. Second and 11 now. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. 
You and I watched film yesterday, and he told me to watch his feet. For whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led to the incompletion. Throw left side complete. That's Warner. And he'll only get this to about the 44 as they stop him short of the line to gain. That'll bring up fourth down. They wind up getting eight yards, but they needed more than that. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. The Seahawks send out their punter. Back deep for the Texans, Will Fuller. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. Heading out is the Texans offense as they get set to take over here. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. On first down, it's White. That's complete to the tight end, Akins. And he'll be out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Now White. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Johnson. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. A little football 101 there. You just see the receiver try to run down the defender, meaning he goes right at him, and really trying to move him a little bit towards the center of the field so he can put his foot in the ground and break to the out to the sideline and make a catch. A first down carry for Foster. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. Now, after that last running play, we've got an offensive lineman down on the field. We'll check on his status when we get back. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. To throw, White. He completes this into the hands of Miller. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Partner took a while for him to lock onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn the field and make anything out of it. White looks to throw. That's Foster hauling it in over the middle. And they'll get him down at about the 37, well short of the first. Three yards, all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff, and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Cameron Johnston now, as he's on to punt for Houston. So 
So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Breeze now on first down. And that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there. And it's second down. He did an okay job of absorbing the hit, just couldn't secure the football through the catch. And he was right there on the spot for the incompletion. That's something defenders work on all the time. If you're there, make the contact, but continue to work your way through the receiver so that he can't possess the football and turn it into a catch. And he can't hang on to it, and the screen never got started. A lot of teams love to throw screen passes. They want to tire out defenses because they make them run a lot. But there are a lot of moving parts on a play for an offense when they call that one. Because you got the linemen that have to move. You have the wide receivers that have to get out and vacate. You got the running back that's got to make a little fake and then get out into the route. And of course, the quarterback, he's got to hold in there and know he's probably going to take a big hit before he lofts the screen off to the back. Why didn't he catch it? That's all he needed to do for them to be successful. I usually hesitate when I say a guy's got world-class speed, but this guy might. So let's fire the starter's pistol. Let's go. If you've got him, you've got to try and use him. A lot of anticipation with the ball in the air, but no, incomplete. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. It's a 45-yard punt, six yards on the return. And the Texans will take over with a first and 10. And here comes the Texans now. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at the 41-yard line. They'll start on the ground with Foster. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was one defense right there. He saw the play in front of him and able to hold the point of attack. Then he sheds it and goes and makes a tackle for a loss. Loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches. Two-minute drill. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. No receivers open, so who's forced to put that one into Puget Sound? That's a great job defensively blanketing those receivers. And ultimately, a smart idea by him just to get the ball out of there. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. White. Quick completion here to Johnson. And he gets it just shy of midfield, but that's not enough. He's short of the marker. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it. And then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping him from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Here's Cameron Johnston now as he's on to punt for Houston. They'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. The 
ball now going back over to Seattle Seahawks offense. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You could never have enough points with the high powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you try and score when given the opportunity. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Breeze now to throw. That one almost intercepted, but it's incomplete. Not a good throw there, and it'll be second down. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Throwing now is Breeze. This one into the hands of Largent. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First down, Breeze. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Partners, a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fellow runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. Again, it's Breeze. And yeah, that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. Receiver coaches preach to their guys all the time. Separation, that's what's going to make the play successful. That time there was very little, and I think they were actually fortunate that it was only knocked away and not intercepted. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Working from the gun, it's Breeze. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Five yards, now it's third and five. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight, doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Open man is Metcalf. He's got it. Now the Seahawks call the second this. of their three timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. to throw again. And he finds his tight end, Graham. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. And let's face it, you can put any Halloween costume on him. You're not going to be able to disguise him because for a tight end of his size, difficult to sneak him anywhere, but that's what they tried to do. Lined up on his right, tried to work his way back to his left, but just a minimal gain as the defense was able to react quickly. Timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. Yeah. 
So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 39. And his kick is right there. It's good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So we will not go into the locker's time. We do have a leader in the clubhouse, so to speak. Yeah, it's only three points. Doesn't seem like much, but it looms big the way that they got it done right before the half ended. the kick is away from a couple yards deep he'll bring it out of the end zone and he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21 yard line with well, a white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it All that remains is to snap this once, and that'll do it for the first half of play. So we are at halftime here in downtown Seattle with the Seahawks out in front. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome in everyone to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime. There you have it. Halftime quickly over. Third quarter, here we go. First order of business, though. Let's get a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for Houston. And they weren't able to get a whole lot done throwing the football. That'll likely be a big key if they want to turn things around in the second half. with the advantage and they get the football first as the second half is underway and this will not be returned so the second half begins with a touchback the Bucks ready to go here to begin the third quarter and Charles they've got the lead put your coaching hat on here now what's the game plan for the second half I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game, first and ten here. Now a throw over the middle, and he's got it to start the drive. And they work this well up field across the 45. As they began this drive, I was wondering how they were going to attack since they're playing with the lead. Would they continue to try and push the ball downfield? Well, after one play, it appears that the answer is yes. Big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Now Breeze. And his throw is incomplete. I didn't like the look of that play right from the beginning. I thought he should have seen the coverage that was there. Tried to force it in. That one he's fortunate just fell incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. To throw is Breeze. Over the middle, that's caught by Metcalf. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans 40. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. Oh, and this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. It's always tough trying to 
trying to keep your guy upright when he's trying to throw the football. When you're dealing with those big, bad guys on the defensive front, it's even tougher. And this time, those guys on the opposite side won the battle, getting to the quarterback and knocking him into an incompletion. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Now Breeze. And this will be incomplete. After that throw, and it was definitely one that he would love to have back. I wonder what's going through his head. I wonder what kind of mind game he's playing with himself to get himself back on track. Because a lot of guys, that's what they do. They have little triggers that when the mechanics are off or if they make a bad throw, that they go to that place to get themselves back in sync. Now, Breeze again. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. And the defense coming through on third down, a loss of seven to bring up fourth. I remember when I was a kid, and all I wanted was a nickel so I could get that soda down at the fountain. And guess what? The nickel came into play well. Five defensive backs, they covered well, allowed for the sacks. Sodas were a nickel when you were a kid? No, I just needed the extra nickel oh. so, I could pay the, so I could pay the proper okay, price. How much were they, a dime? <laughs> what were they? Uh, 15 cents. The Seahawks send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? They say just outside the 20-yard line. Here's the Texans offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense him saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. The play fake, now White. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. A deep ball down that right sideline, and he made sure that he put it where either his guy was going to catch it or no one was. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now White. Over the middle, complete. That's Foster. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. Here's White. He's going to float this one deep right side. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. A huge play there for Houston. But sometimes you just got to marvel at how these guys can throw the football. He gave that everything he had, and it was right on the money. And that is absolutely demoralizing for a defense because you've got the offense on the ropes. It's third down. You're trying to get off the field, and then wham. You have a letdown in the secondary, and you give up a big one. And that throw, amazingly, well over 70 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. Wow. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. Throw right side into the hands of Aikens. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. Back to throw again. That's complete to the tight end, Akins. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Now this red zone is where the Seahawk crowd really makes it tough for an offense to communicate. It's third down. Now White. 
Got an open man. It's Foster. And the Texans are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. To throw, White. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. White looks to throw. Got his tight end, that's complete. It's Daniels. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. They'll wind up losing three here on the play. And that is going to set up third and goal. Boy, how good has this defense been seemingly all game long? I really think right from the first snap, I think you're really on to something there. In this passing game, they just can't get off the ground. In that play, they wound up losing yardage. This will be play number eight on the drive. It's third and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. That one good for only six, and it leaves him with a fourth down. Well, there certainly was a lot going on back there. Every option in the end zone covered. No place to go with the ball. Had to swing it out to the back. A good job running and getting him tackled in the open field. Kaimi Fairbairn now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the right hash here, should be an easy one. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will knot us up at 10. So we're back to even after the short field goal. CD, you like the decision to kick it there? Well, I'm glad you asked me if I like it and didn't ask me if I love it because I'm not even sure I like it, but I do get it. First job on this drive, tie the game. They did that, but now they've got to put a challenge to their offense and say, can't settle for three anymore, guys. We've got to get the ball in the end zone from here on out. So all square here in this third quarter as the kick's away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's been pretty solid, pretty consistent. Just the one touchdown pass, but I think he's managed the game well, though. I would agree with you, and that's what you're looking for out of your field leader. Making sure that you're playing well and not making any big mistakes. Oftentimes, that's how you're judged. How big a mistake and when it occurs. No interception so far. They'll like that. I just want you to know that you agreeing with me, that's going to get me through this third and fourth quarter. Are you touched? <laughs> He's patting his heart, boys and girls. He's touched. Respect. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. But plain and simple, that's the second time today that he's dropped a pass. And that one, I think, maybe even a little easier than the earlier one that he dropped. Surprising. Was this game announced as a night game prior to, and maybe his rhythm was confused. just off? He's got know. thrown off. He's got to wake up, enjoy the sunshine, and go play. The throw on the quick slant going to be complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh, so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. But we'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports.
So first and 10 now from the 30. Now a give right side. Warner. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. And there on the tackle, Shaq Lawson. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, that was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll keep it on the ground. It's Warner. He takes this from the 30 to the 34. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offense coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. And the Seahawks on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. Here's Breeze to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The Seahawks send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Great coverage there, holds him to a two-yard return following a 50-yard punt. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. From the pistol, it's Foster. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. White. And he gets this out to Foster on the right side. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll make it third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big game downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short game. From the shotgun, here's White. He finds Hopkins complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass tree in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. On first down, Foster. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Here's second and nine. They keep it in the hands of Foster. And this will go for five up to the 33. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Looking to throw. White. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Akins. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. A 
couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Out of the gun, it's White. And it's out. He put it on the carpet. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. Here's the Seattle offense ready to get this drive underway. Now Breeze. He finds his man complete. It's Warner. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That one unable to develop, never got going. A loss of a couple, and it's second down. Clock running, about to hit 90 seconds to go in the game. Back to throw, Breeze. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. A really nice knockdown. He has so much pressure in these situations on defensive backs. What are they taught? Play the ball, not the man, because if you have a pass interference penalty in this spot, Boy, oh boy, you put your team in a bad place. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Hands it off out of the gun. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. The Seahawks send out their punter as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. We'll call that a 49-yard punt with a return of just two. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Houston offense as they get set to take over here. They've got work to do, but they do still have a bit of time here. And they've got to feel comfortable with that, but they have all their play sequences called. If they get out of bounds, that allows them to huddle and call another play. But if they don't, it's hurry up to the line of scrimmage and either spike it and stop the clock or continue to move it downfield in order to try and get in range and win this game. See if they can do just that. On first down, it's White. Pass caught, Miller. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. There's a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd went to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And they work this well upfield across the 45. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there. And now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Operating from the gun, White. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll take this beyond the line of scrimmage as he slides to a hole. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Eight yards to go on second down. Oh, 
From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Try to lay one up deep. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Now we're in the situation where the quarterback's got to take full charge of his home. Got to totally command and make sure all eyes are on him. All focus is locked in. Going to call multiple plays and go over different situations and scenarios to make sure everyone is on the same page. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, White. It's complete to Hopkins. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. A gain of nine yards. First down, Texas. Right now, you know that the heart is pumping for Kyrie Fairbear. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. Right now, you know that the heart is pumping for Kyrie Fairbear. This from long, very long range. Let's go. Let's and go. we will Let's go. get a timeout with two ticks left. Right now, you know that the heart is pumping for Kaimi Fairbear. This from long, very long range. And that is no good. And a costly one there as this game remains tied here in the fourth. Final whistle blows, and we need some extra time here to decide who will be the victor. 60 minutes, just not enough some days to decide who's going to win the game. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Seattle again getting ready to take over offensively. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. That's a nice run right there, able to get to the outside. And so many times, defenses say, okay, we've got you hemmed in. But if you're running the football, at least you know where everyone is coming from. You don't have to worry about the backside at all. That allows you to run with a little bit more confidence as you traverse down the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. First throw of overtime for Breeze. Going for the deep ball. It's intercepted. Picked off inside the 10. And the Texans are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. A costly mistake here in OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician.